Tonight, the Kitchener Waterloo Symphony and the Institute for Quantum Computing will examine how physics and music intersect. Physics describes forces in the world around us. Music expresses our perceptions and feelings about the world around us. One rational, one emotional. There is some music on this concert tonight that may drive you slightly insane. Um, I'll tell you that at the outset, if you find your mind wandering, let it wander. That may be the composer's intention. If you find yourself kind of confronted by the music, that's okay. If you don't like the music, that's okay. But I will guarantee you that this will be a most amazing journey tonight through really interesting and unusual sounds and some new ideas. So let's begin as our ideas enter now into the quantum world. Let's begin a few centuries ago with two key figures in physics and music. Isaac Newton described the natural laws that govern our universe. Mozart expressed the beauty of Newton's laws with music full of structure and symmetry. In the music of Mozart, as in Newtonian physics, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. As we play the first movement of Mozart's Symphony No. 29, listen to how elegantly one musical idea goes to the next. As music moved into the 19th century, its logic, order, and symmetry were pushed to the limit by the composers of the Romantic era. After all this boundary pushing, composers around 1900 were left in a quandary. How much further could they go? Anton Webern began his com career composing in a lush post-Wagnerian style. Listen to this piece, his Langsamer Satz, which he wrote in 1905 for strings. Like Wagner, the melody seems endless. The music, full of yearning, beautiful, romantic, in a way that we can all understand. Webern drew upon mathematics and logic. He gradually moved towards using set theory and things like palindromes to create a musical language that sounded new and strange on the surface, but in fact was very tightly structured underneath. As we listen to his music, we feel lost in a mysterious place, not sure what is happening or what will come next. It's music of exploration, mystery, and discovery.
there's a fundamental unpredictability of quantum mechanics. Some physicists didn't like this. Albert Einstein was one of them. He said, God doesn't play dice. <laughs> His friend Niels Bohr quickly said back, Albert, don't tell God what to do. <laughs> In 1906, the American composer Charles Ives wrote a piece that perfectly echoes the struggles that scientists and musicians were facing in the early 20th century. Think of this piece as a gateway into the strange new world of quantum science and music. It's called The Unanswered Question. In the early 1900s, physicists began to unveil the very fabric of reality. The framework they pioneered for explaining this reality, quantum mechanics, continues to amaze us, confuse us, inspire us, and in many ways, define us. The music you're going to hear from now on is directly inspired by science and has an indirect but interesting connection to quantum phenomena. Around the middle of the 20th century, when quantum science unveiled strange new dimensions beyond our experience, the composer Henry Brandt explored new dimensions in music. He believed that along with the three traditional dimensions of music, pitch, rhythm, and timbre, there was a fourth, space. He experimented with the placement of musicians within a performance space, searching for the new textural nuances, feelings, and ideas. He was a scientist of sound. In the 1960s and 70s, things began to change. A young generation of physicists began to revisit and rethink the deepest questions of quantum mechanics. They embraced the randomness of quantum physics rather than fighting it. The American composer John Cage had the same intrepid spirit of these physicists of the 1960s and 70s. He believed that everything around us was music. Cage visited the observatory and borrowed star maps from the library. He composed Atlas Eclipticalis by copying the positions of stars and galaxies onto transparencies and then using those transparencies to transfer the stellar information to sheet music. The players are literally reading the star charts with a few extra directions by Cage. What you will experience is the soundtrack of nature's grandest ongoing physics experiment the universe itself.
the piece with John Cage is really raw randomness to me. It is really kind of these facts that comes in that we cannot put together. They come from all these different places. It's hard to listen. It's a little bit scary because we cannot predict where the music is going. We don't really know when it started. We don't know where it will end. And this is really a part of quantum mechanics. One of my students said to me yesterday, it's a little bit like starting a thesis. We never know when it's going to end. <laughs> Since Weber's time, composers were explicitly applying mathematical calculations to create music. This continued through the 20th century and perhaps reached its apex with the music of Zanakis. He would build pieces of music using calculations that an architect or engineer would. Zanakis was one of the world's first composers to use a computer to write music, or rather, to program computers to essentially write the music themselves. He was the architect of the music, the computer was the builder. Tonight has been a behind-the-scenes look at some of the revolutionary ideas that have shaped our present and future. If we look back at the music and science of the 20th century, there is an incredible experimental spirit behind both. A mix of creativity, risk, hard work, and a willingness to embrace the random and the weird. We can't predict exactly what lies ahead in music or in science. We know there will be new pioneers, new works of genius, new directions we never considered going. We believe composers will always react to and interpret scientific discovery. We expect tonight's concert won't be the last quantum symphony. We know the universe is endlessly fascinating, endlessly beautiful. There is always something going on just beyond our expectations. The trick is to never stop looking deeper. <laughs>